Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and today it's a cold and windy, but sunny December day in southeastern Wisconsin, which is perfect for the solar panels, except for this giant dark shadow. So today I wanted to talk about solar shading. At this time of year, uh, the sun just doesn't get very high in the sky. In fact, at noon today, it's only going to be about 30 degrees above the horizon. And at the winter solstice, it's about 23 degrees above the horizon. That's not very high at all, so it's not a very good angle to match with the solar panels. But the other thing that happens is shadows are exaggerated. They're very, very long. So the shadow back here is actually coming from a pine tree that's way up in my front yard, uh, south of here. And it's not a tremendously tall tree, but because the sun is so low, I'm actually getting some shadowing back here. Now, I pretty much expected that to happen because before designing my garage and putting the solar panels on there, uh, I used a device to check what my shading might be. So I used one called a solar pathfinder. Basically, it's a ref reflective dome with a little graph. Uh, you look at it, you can take a photo of it, and it helps you see where you're going to have issues with shading. So what I did is I designed my solar system to use microinverters. And with microinverters, there's one of these behind each and every one of the solar panels. So what happens that way is each solar panel is independent from all the other solar panels. Whereas if they were connected together in the more traditional series connection, if just one of those solar panels was shaded, it would knock down production from all of the panels uh, in that series. So uh, commonly it might be all the panels in one row, for example. And actually the bigger reason why I went with the microinverters is because my neighbor has an entire line of uh, maple trees to the west of me. I've got a narrow north-south running lot and I knew that I'd have issues with shading from those trees in the afternoon in the summer. The other thing the microinverters do is they give me a lot of information on my system. So we can actually go inside where it's warm, go on the computer, and actually take a look at how this shadow right over here is affecting my solar production. So this is from the last week, just showing how much power I'm making. Uh, so for example, on a nice sunny day earlier this week, middle of the day I was making a little over 4,000 watts. Uh, it's been great to have some sunny weather lately because a lot of times in my area this time of year it can be very dark, very gray. So if you look two days ago, ouch, I almost may as well have not had any solar for how much power uh, we produced that day. So this is great to have this information. This is not the sort of thing I check on a daily basis, but it's nice to show you, for example, troubleshooting. So let's take a look at our, our view. And what we can do is look at the, the same last seven days. So if we look at the sunny day earlier in the week, uh, it represents all of my solar panels here. I've got uh, three rows of eight. And let's just uh, watch an animation of the solar panels and think about that shading from that pine tree. So there you can see that very dark spot go across, and then it gets darker, and then boom, everything goes down. So if we kind of scrub through this, show you what's happening. In the morning, the sun comes up, all the solar panels are starting to make power. Um, looks like earlier this week, uh, around 180, maybe 190 watts. Um, in the middle of the day, but look at that dark spot at the bottom of the screen. That is that shadow from that pine tree, and it's just affecting the bottom row of solar panels. It's not high enough to get to that middle row, but it's knocking the power down from about 180 watts to, oh, 22, 28, 23. But the thing is, it's only affecting one or two solar panels uh, right at the bottom. All of the other solar panels are completely unaffected. Now if this was a traditional solar setup, uh, perhaps these eight solar panels here uh, would be strung up in series and basically all these solar panels would be knocked down to about that 28 watts each. Now these would probably be in separate strings and unaffected. Um, I actually have two circuits in my garage. Um, so if this was done as a traditional strings, maybe this would have been one string and the other two rows would have been another string and in that case two-thirds of my system would have been knocked down to that you know 20 some watts per panel that would be a huge huge dent in the production but because of the microinverters it's only one or two 
uh, panels at a time that are being affected. Now if we keep going through the day, we see another little bit of a uh, drop in production there, uh, much less pronounced so. That appears to be the uh, uh, the deciduous tree that's way up in my front yard. It's uh, up by the road, um, and that's doing just a little bit of a shadow. And then if you look in kind of the, the hill here of the production chart, uh, things go down pretty quick, and that's because these shadows coming across, that's from my neighbor's tree line. And we're looking at, I mean, this is starting at two in the afternoon and by 3, 3.15, you know, production's really done for the day. And now what's interesting is that that shadowing is produced by trees to the west of me on my neighbor's property line. Uh, nothing I can do about those trees, but I knew that they were going to be an issue. Um, at least in the winter, you know, the sun is more in the southern sky. In the summer, it really crosses the east um, to straight above to the west. So if we take a look and do a custom range of our power production, we're going to go back to June. Uh, actually, the week that I started my solar production, it was a, a pretty nice sunny week. So let's take a look at that. Uh, over here, this is before my system was on. Here was some testing. And then this was the day that I actually got to turn the solar panels on. So let's take a look at the first day after that nice sunny day, my first full day of solar production. We're making... Oh, around 200 watts per panel in the middle of the day there. And you can see this kind of nice smooth ramp up of power. And it starts pretty early in the morning. You know, 7 in the morning we're starting to make power and it's coming up pretty quick. But in the afternoon, about, about 3.30, we start to see the shade really sweep across the array. And, and it's solid. It's like a wall of shadow. And that's my neighbor's trees uh, full of leaves. And the sun is just too far to the west. And I'm, I'm getting shading. So if we, we take a look at the graph view again here and make sure we're looking back at uh, our June numbers. Look here how, you know, we've got this great curve coming up, but it's just more steep on the right-hand side. You know, about 3.15 to 5.30 it really drops. And then after that, it's, it's just kind of the, the diffuse light that's in the sky. So we're not making as much power in the afternoon as we are in the morning because of that late sun. But keep in mind that in that time that that shadow is sort of sweeping across, that takes, what, about an hour, I think. Yeah, an hour, or, uh, an hour to two hours. Um, so, for example, here on the left, this panel is only making 14 watts, but these panels over here are still making 130 watts. So, during that hour and a half or so, that these panels over here are making very little power, these ones are still making plenty of power. So, on average, I end up getting more total power out of the system. Again, if just these panels over here were getting shaded they would otherwise knock down that power to an entire string uh, if those solar panels were otherwise in series. So in the summer, the microinverters really help with that uh, kind of late afternoon shading as the, the shadow of my neighbor's trees come across the solar panels. And then in the winter, the microinverters help with things like this hard shadow line from that pine tree. So that's it for today. I hope this gives you a better idea about uh, solar shading and why I chose to go with microinverters. Uh, is my place perfect for solar? Uh, frankly, no. Um, it could be a little bit better. It's not perfect, but on the other hand, because I actually put up a solar system, even though it's not ideal ideal, I've still been making a tremendous amount of solar, pan uh, solar power. And in fact, December is probably going to be the first time uh, I've gotten an electric bill uh, in the last six months since I originally put up the system. And of course, after the winter solstice, uh, that energy production is gonna be on the rise again. So I'm very excited about that. So until next time, stay charged up.